Hello friends, my name is Rohit and I am teaching Quant and DI to the CAT students for the past 8 years. Today we will discuss the concept of quadratic equations. First of all, let us have a quick overview of the things that we are going to discuss in this session. There will be certain concepts uh, regarding the quadratic equations. After that, there will be problems based on the quadratic equations and then there will be some practice questions as well as their answer keys. So let us start with our session. The general quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0 where a, b and c they are the real numbers and whenever we have to find the solution of this quadratic equation the general solution is given by x equals to minus b which is the coefficient of x plus minus b square minus 4ac upon 2a where b square minus 4ac it is known as the discriminant of the quadratic equation. So this is the general formula to find the solution of a quadratic equation. Otherwise, we can also solve a quadratic equation by factorizing it. Now, as we have discussed that d equals to b square minus 4ac is the discriminant. Now, based on this discriminant, we have the nature of the roots. So let us discuss about the nature of the roots. Okay. We have the solution of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 as x is equal to minus b plus minus under b square minus 4ac over 2a where b square minus 4ac is the discriminant. Now first case is when this discriminant is positive. Now if the discriminant is positive that means the square root of this discriminant will be a real number as the square root of positive numbers is always a real number. So that means minus b is, minus b is already a real number this number is real, 2a is real, so on the whole the roots of the equation are real. Further, first of all you are adding minus b to the real number then you are subtracting this real number from minus b. That means once you are adding two numbers and then you are subtracting two numbers. That means the two results will be different. So we can see that the roots which we will obtain here will be real as well as distinct. Second case. If b square minus 4ac is 0 means this term is 0. That means once you are adding 0 to minus b and then you are subtracting 0 from minus b. So in the both cases the result will be same. So in this case the roots are equal as well as real. Now third case when this discriminant is negative. Now we know that the square root of negative numbers is always an imaginary number. So whenever this discriminant is negative, the roots of the equation will be imaginary. So these are the three types of roots based on the discriminant of the quadratic equation. Now let us solve. Now in any quadratic equation, say the quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0. Then the sum of the roots is equal to minus b upon a. And the product of roots is given by c upon a. So that means I can write sum of roots as minus the coefficient of x which is b and the coefficient of x square which is a. So I will divide this b by a. So sum of roots is minus b upon a. Similarly, the product of roots is equal to the constant term divided by the coefficient of x square which is a. So sum of roots is given by minus b over a and the product of roots is given by c over a. Now if any equation has sum of roots as s and the product of roots as p, then the equation will be given by x square minus sx plus p equals to 0. You just have to put the values of s and p in this equation. Let us uh, discuss one example based on this concept. Let us take two roots. Let the roots are 5 and 8. And we have to find the equation whose roots are 5 and 8. So first of all, what we will do? We will find the sum. So sum of roots is 5 plus 8 equals to 13. 
and then product of roots which is equal to 5 into 8 equals to 40. Now the sum and the product of roots is 30 and 40 and the equation is given by x square minus sx plus p equals to 0. So the final equation will be x square minus sx plus p equals to 0. Now put the values of s and p here. So we get x square minus 13x plus product is 40 equals to 0. So this is the equation which has the roots as 5 and 8. Now come to the questions. Here is the first question. We are given an equation and we have to find the nature of the roots. So if I compare this equation by the general equation which is ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0, what we will get is a equals to 1, d which is the coefficient of x is equal to 8 and the constant term c is equal to 5. So from here the discriminant will be b square minus 4ac. Now put the values of b, a and c. So we get 8 square minus 4 into a into c. So this is equal to 64 minus 20 which is equal to 44 and as this number is positive means discriminant is positive. Now if the discriminant is positive the roots will be real and distinct. So the roots of this given equation are real and different or distinct. So answer is the fourth option. Now again here we have a and c and given that a and c are of opposite signs then the roots of this equation are again we have to find the nature of the roots here. So the given equation is 4ax square plus 3bx plus 2c equals to 0. Now the discriminant of this equation is given by 3b square minus 4 into 4a into 2c which is equal to 9b square minus 32ac. Now the question says that the values of a and c are of opposite sign. It means that if a is positive then c will be negative. If a is negative then c will be positive. We can say that as a and c are of opposite sign. So that means a into c will be less than 0. Now as ac is less than 0 it means that 32 AC is also less than 0 or minus 32 AC will be positive. So that means this term is a positive number. Also 9 B square is a positive number. So that means on the whole this number is a positive number. So this, this means that discriminant of the quadratic equation is greater than 0. Now if the discriminant is greater than 0, so the roots of this equation are real and distinct. So answer is option third. In the next question, we have two people, Ajay and Kurana. They have attempted to solve a quadratic equation. Ajay made a mistake in writing down the constant term and he found the roots as 12 and minus 9. Whereas Kurana made the mistake in writing down the coefficient of x and he got the roots as minus 22 and 4. So we have to find the exact roots of the original quadratic equation. Let us take the quadratic equation as ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0. The sum of roots is given by minus b over a and the product of roots is given by c over a. Now as Ajay had made the mistake in the constant term that means his product of roots will be wrong as c is used to find the product of the roots. It means that the sum of roots obtained by Ajay will be correct. So as the roots obtained by Ajay are 12 and minus 9, so we can say that the sum of roots is equal to 12 plus minus 9 which is equal to 3. Again, the second person Kurana, he made the mistake in writing down the coefficient of x which is b. So Kurana had taken b as a wrong number. 
now b is used to find the sum of the roots so that means the sum of the roots obtained by b will be wrong but the product of roots obtained by corona will be a correct one so here we can say that the product of the roots will be equal to minus 22 into 4 as the roots obtained by corona are minus 22 and 4 so product of roots will be equal to minus 88 now we have sum of roots with us we have product of roots with us and we know that the quadratic equation whenever we have sum of sum of roots and product of roots with us will be equal to x square minus sx plus p equals to 0 so put the values here so we get x square minus 3x minus 88 equals to 0 now we have to find the roots of the original quadratic equation which is x square minus 3x minus 88 equal to 0 so we will factorize it So factors will be x square minus 11x plus 8x minus 88 equal to zero, or x into x minus 11 plus 8 into x minus 11 equal to zero, or we can say that the factors are x plus 8 and x minus 11 equal to zero. From here, the roots are minus 8 and 11. so that means option number 2 is the right answer now here it is given that p and q are the roots of the quadratic equation x square minus alpha minus 4x plus alpha minus 2 equal to 0 and we have to find the minimum possible value of p square plus q square so we have the quadratic equation x square minus alpha minus 4x plus alpha minus 2 equals to 0 and the roots of this equation are given to be p and q so sum of roots is p plus q equals to alpha minus 4 and the product of roots is given equal to alpha minus 2 we have to find the minimum possible value of p square plus q square actually you can see here that the roots are depending upon the value of alpha so whenever this alpha will change the root of the equation will change and correspondingly the value of p square plus q square will also change so we have to find the value of p square plus q square which will be a minimum value now for that let us first find the value of p square plus q square now we know that p square plus q square is equal to p plus q whole square minus 2 pq now put the values of p plus q and pq here so we get alpha minus 4 whole square minus twice of alpha minus 2 or just expand it alpha square plus 16 minus 8 alpha minus 2 alpha plus 4 or it is equal to alpha square minus 10 alpha plus 20 equal. so p square plus q square is equal to alpha square minus 10 alpha plus 20 now what we will do here is we will complete the perfect square on the right hand side for that we will divide the coefficient of alpha by 2 and then we will find its square and that square will be added and subtracted from the expression on the right hand side now here the coefficient of alpha is minus 10 and half of minus 10 is minus 5 and square of minus 5 is 25 now we will add and subtract this 25 from the expression on the right hand side so we have p square plus q square equals to alpha square minus 10 alpha plus 25 plus 20 minus 25 now this term is a perfect square so that means p square plus q square is equal to alpha minus 5 whole square minus 5 now you can see that this alpha minus 5 whole square is a perfect square so its minimum value will be 0 and that will be obtained when alpha becomes 5 so that means the minimum value of p square plus q square will be obtained when this alpha minus 5 whole square will be 0 so minimum value of p square plus q square is equal to 0 minus 5 which is equal to 
minus 5. So that means option 4 is our answer. So whenever you have such type of questions, just try to make the right hand side a perfect square. So the answer is option 4. Now in this question we have one root of this first quadratic equation x square plus px plus 12 equal to 0 is 4 while the second equation has equal roots. So we have to find the value of q. The first equation is x square plus px plus 12 equal to 0. Now question says that its one root is 4. So if 4 is the root of this equation that means 4 will satisfy this equation. So just put the value of x in this equation we get. 4 square plus 4p plus 12 equal to 0 or it means that 4p is equal to minus 28 or p is equal to minus 7. Now from the first equation we got the value of p as minus 7. Now if we look at the second equation it is x square plus px plus q equals to 0. Now as the value of p is minus 7, so this equation will become x square minus 7x plus q equals to 0. Now it is given that the roots of this equation are equal. So if the roots of the second equation are equal, that means the discriminant which is equal to b square minus 4ac will be equal to 0. Now we have to equate the discriminant of the second equation equal to 0. Now in the second equation we have the value of a as 1 as the coefficient of x square is 1. Coefficient of x is minus 7 so that means b is equal to minus 7 and the value of c which is constant is equal to q. So that means the discriminant d will be equal to minus 7 square minus 4 into a into c which is q and this is equal to 0. So from here we can say that 49 minus 4q is equal to 0 or 4q is equal to 49 and from here we can say that the value of q is equal to 49 divided by 4. So that means option 1 is our answer. So these are certain practice questions. Just try to solve these questions by using the concepts which you have learnt in the previous slides. These are the answers. To watch more such videos and learn such concepts, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hit Bullseye. Thank you.